Hello, and welcome to the Siemens Connect podcast series with your host, myself, Christine Moran. If you're new to listening, each podcast will have a special guest from our Siemens Connect ecosystem. Our Siemens Connect ecosystem allows Siemens to partner with third-party companies to establish integrations to Siemens systems. Today, we'll be talking to Brian from our partner, Piero. Hey, Brian, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing that? I'm good. Uh, do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Of course. Um, yeah, so I'm Brent Stern. I'm the CEO of Puro. Um, been in the lighting and UV disinfection space uh, since 2009 when I started my first company uh, two years out of college. And uh, Puro has been around for the last four years. Um, we were primarily pioneering the uh, healthcare and athletic spaces with UV technology and then uh, expanded what we were doing greatly uh, during the pandemic uh, to assist schools, universities, transit departments, uh, commercial spaces uh, with disinfection technologies. Um, we've completed some of the largest projects in the world um, using disinfection systems and some of the well-tested products uh, in the category. Cool. Yeah, so I, I know you kind of touched a little bit on this already, um, but can you tell me a little bit more about what Puro offers and what you guys do? Of course. Um, so Puro has a variety of different offerings, uh, all, all around UV disinfection technology. So UV is a, uh, a basically a type of light or radiation that can be used to disinfect surfaces or continuously disinfect air. Um, and so we have multiple product categories. We have our surface disinfection products, um, which are our Hilo products. These are designed to basically uh, provide acute levels of disinfection, so high levels of disinfection um, of surfaces in short periods of time. And then we have our Puro Airline, which is our continuous air disinfection technologies. And these are designed to be installed within spaces um, or in HVAC systems. Uh, to continuously disinfect the air within those spaces. Um, we can achieve very high levels of disinfection, uh, up to 99.999% uh, levels of disinfection of viruses and bacteria, fungus, uh, fungal and mold. Um, and so our solutions are used kind of all over the place, um, primarily throughout North America, um, Europe, and some areas in South America and uh, used within healthcare, uh, within schools and universities, uh, general commercial spaces, um, as well as transit applications. So you guys are pretty much everywhere, it sounds like. Every we're, market, lots of different countries. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in quite a few different markets. Um, and really, you know, our products were, were originally designed for the healthcare space. So they were designed to like a very high level uh, that's required for healthcare applications. Um, and what we've found is just the tremendous need in other uh, other categories and locations for for these products. So we've expanded our lines uh, significantly. Um, over the last two years, um, we've gone from having uh, three main products uh, that we offer into the market to today we have 10 kind of market leading products that we offer. So um, it's uh, it's been been a, a crazy couple of years um, of growth, and we're continuing to bring out new products, new technologies, improvements to our existing lines, uh, and expanding our capabilities. Wow, that's pretty cool. So yeah, it's been, I know. Been fun. <laughs> so I know UV lighting. Um, you know, uh, it for me it seems new, just because it's you know I'm just learning about a lot of this stuff now. But is it a really a new technology, or has it been around for a while? It's definitely not a new technology. So uh, UV, um, UV has been around for a very long time. Um, the original testing on UV products happened about 140 years ago. Um, and essentially during that, uh, scientists would put kind of like bacteria samples out into the sun. Um, the sun obviously produces uh, different spectrums of UV that make their way to the Earth's surface and um, found that different types of bacteria, or fungus, uh, were actually killed by a spectrum of sunlight um, or inactivated by a spectrum of sunlight. And so uh, scientists back then actually concluded that there was a spectrum um, that, was, uh, that was affecting them in some way. Um, they didn't know exactly how it was affecting them at that time, but um, that was some of the first UV research. Some of the first commercial product um, that was actually used in the market was during 
uh, during the polio uh, epidemics um, in like the 1940s. Um, and uh, UV for upper air disinfection was being used within classrooms, um, hospitals, um, a couple other categories. Um, and what they found, because uh, they were doing large, uh, large rollouts of this, is that uh, polio infections um, actually decreased by about 60% um, in the classrooms that were using UV for upper air. And so... Wow. Um, really, really significant, uh, significant studies. And so uh, UV has been around for a very long time. Um, knowledge around uh, the use of UV for reducing uh, airborne pathogens, um, again, has been around for a very long time. Um, but uh, what we've done, I would say, in like the last decade is um, uh, just in kind of improvements to the technology. We, the technology has become easier to use. Uh, easier to use in more applications. Um, and I think the effectiveness of the technology uh, has really kind of shown in the last, you know, in the last couple of years, um, just due to the amount of press that was around uh, the pandemic. Um, one of the first large jobs that we worked on during the pandemic was the city of New York mass transit. Uh, so this was disinfecting all the subways and buses uh, for the city of New York. Um, it's, it got a tremendous amount of press and made headlines. You know, we were on every major media uh, publication that was out there, CNN, uh, ABC, NBC, Fox, BBC, you know, TechCrunch, pretty, pretty much every, everyone. Um, and that kind of, uh, I would say, caused some of the explosive growth uh, in the UV space during the pandemic. Uh, we were the third organization in the world to actually test against SARS-CoV-2, so the, the COVID-19 virus. And uh, our technology was shown very early on in the pandemic to be highly effective against uh, the COVID-19 virus. And so from there, uh, I would say that the category expanded kind of exponentially. Um, the amount of applications for its use uh, expanded exponentially. And the knowledge around UV, um, just the household knowledge around UV, I think expanded uh, tremendously during that time. Yeah, I didn't realize how old that was. It's very interesting that, you know, it was used during the polio times too. Yes. So it's it's been a really well-proven technology. Um, it's not something new to to the market. And the science behind it is, uh, is very old. There's obviously... Uh, there's, there's a large body of science behind using UVC uh, for germicidal inactivation. Um, studies in the last five or 10 years that have, I would say, further expanded the body of knowledge around it. Okay. I know you touched on this already a little bit, but how did the pandemic start really affecting your business? And I, I know I remember reading some of these articles that you were referencing about like the New York transit system and um, you know, being installed in a lot of different places. It's very interesting. Definitely. So I'd say it brought in the reach of our technologies. Um, as I mentioned, the technologies that we were primarily selling into the markets before the pandemic were, a lot of them were going to the healthcare world. Um, healthcare understood the use of UV and they, uh, you know, they had started standardizing in various applications. And so, um, because of that, we had a lot of testing already on our products. We knew what our products were able to do, um, but the products were obviously were not designed for a transit application, mm -hmm. operating room or you know a patient room, things like that. And so we had to, um, I would say, uh, kind of flex quite a bit um, at the beginning of the pandemic um, and get really creative with the solution offering um, to make it a little bit easier to use in some of these other uh, application types. Um, City of New York, again, that was kind of the biggest biggest project um, at the beginning of the pandemic for us or any company. I think it was one of the largest UV implementations in the world, um, if not the largest. And um, it helped us to, I would say, broaden uh, broaden the scope of our product use. So, you know, from there we started, you know, being used in hotels, uh, in commercial spaces that were trying to stay open, in logistics. Um, uh, obviously continued uh, in healthcare and then expanded tremendously in schools in the school and university space, which which had a lot of need. Um, they were trying to figure out ways to to bring students back into those uh, into those facilities. And from our uh, original product lines, which were primarily focused on uh, surface disinfection, 
Um, so disinfecting actual surfaces within a space um, because uh, the healthcare world, um, that was a big focus of theirs. Um, we, we launched a whole new line of products called Puro Air um, in March of 2021. Um, just to put in perspective, that launch was so successful that those uh, air, continuous air disinfection products went on to make up uh, about 80% of our revenues for uh, the rest of the year. Um, and so people were very focused on continuous air disinfection. They wanted to reduce, uh, you know, viral uh, pathogen loads within their spaces. Um, and it allowed us to expand our lines uh, significantly. Um, so our product offerings today are three or four times larger than they were pre-pandemic. Um, and our company has grown uh by about you know, 500 percent during uh, during that time. So, from an employee standpoint, uh, from uh, a product standpoint, um, as well. Wow. So, I guess kind of going through some of the products, um, what are the different ways that your product can be installed, and how is it different compared to other UV disinfection um, companies and products that we've seen in the market today? Definitely. So. Um, a lot of our products are very unique. So our, our Hilo disinfection devices, which are surface disinfection products, um, I would say before the pandemic, that was actually one of the only installed, uh, installable UV products uh, for surface disinfection available uh, in the market. Um, additionally, it has a whole bunch of other functionality that's really unique. Uh, it can be controlled with uh, BACnet, which is like a building automation system protocol. Um, it can be integrated within other control systems uh, for you know, easier control, um, better reporting capabilities, um, and provides really acute levels of disinfection. So by acute, I mean uh, like high levels of disinfection in short periods of time. It's a very intense source, um, and it's very small. So you know, our smallest units um, that can disinfect uh, about a space 10 by 10, so like a small room, um, it's only the size of a book. It's six inches by eight inches by two and a half inches in depth. Um, it has all the control built into that system um, in that size and has full back net compatibility. Um, so it's a really unique product. Um, very, very compact, very strong. Um, it is also one of the most tested products in the world um, against SARS-CoV-2, so the COVID-19 virus. Um, we've had three independent uh, tests on that product since the beginning of the pandemic. And that product was the product that was also used um, in the city of New York and by about a dozen other transit organizations around the country uh, to disinfect uh, subways, buses, um, different types of uh, different types of vehicles. Um, and so those are Hilo products. Um, our Pure Air products uh, have uh, kind of exploded onto the scene. Um, so we have both uh, products that can be installed within like a room, uh, which is our Aurora, Aurora and our Whisper products. Um, these are some of the quietest products on the market that can do continuous air disinfection and some of the most well-tested. Um, our Aurora product, um, again, has been tested against SARS-CoV-2 as well as a whole, a whole host of other types of pathogens. Um, and we achieve a 99.974% level of disinfection per pass, so per volume of air that moves through our unit once. Um, and so it's one of the most effective units that's available on the market, um, and it's very attractive looking. Um, so it's, it's an easy thing to install within a space. It looks good within a space. Um, we also have units that can go within HVAC, um, so like actually into an air duct, into an air handler. Um, our units uh, are very specialized for that application. Again, very effective. Everything that we do is extremely well tested um, and well vetted. Um, and, uh, and with that, we can also integrate them with building automation systems. Um, so one of the things that we found in this space was that a lot of the systems that were being installed are what we would call kind of like a stupid system. Um, there's no integration. Uh, it's very difficult to, like, uh, to get any type of reporting out of it. And what we were hearing from our customers was that they wanted reporting. They wanted visibility into what was installed within their space, uh, any type of ongoing maintenance that was required. So all of our new systems uh, in this category for the HVAC category uh, all have built-in integration. So they can be controlled by BACnet. 
They can be controlled by uh, different types of control systems like our PureNet control system uh, or be able to report through those, uh, those types of systems. And so um, we're trying to make it easier to install with better reporting capabilities, better monitoring capabilities, um, just to make it a little bit more, I would say, customer centric. Cool. Yes, I've got two more questions for you. Of course. Um, our first one is, uh, what got Puro interested in joining our Siemens Connect ecosystem? So that's a great question. So we actually have a, we have a long history with, uh, with Siemens. Um, and Siemens from the start, um, when we were just kind of pioneering uh, this category, um, had a lot of interest um, in uh, our UVC technologies um, originally for the healthcare space, but now, you know, for some of the other commercial spaces and some really interesting applications. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the product could be well integrated um, with anything that Siemens doing, is doing to make it, uh, to make it uh, simpler for, you know, a Siemens salesperson to be able to sell um, and to make it more connected. Um, Siemens has, say, some of the best building automation technologies available on the market. And we wanted to make sure that our systems were available uh, to those building automation systems. Um, Siemens Connect program has allowed us to do that. Um, it's also allowed us to effectively, I would say, showcase and market those products uh, within Siemens itself. Um, Siemens is a, an enormous entity um, and uh, different areas that Siemens touches uh, are, are very, very broad. And so, uh, in order to really show how your products can be used in a whole bunch of applications, um, it's important, uh, in my opinion, to use the Siemens Connect uh, ecosystem to really uh, be able to showcase that. Um, and also to show that you can be integrated in the greater Siemens uh, ecosystem and, and systems that are available out there. Cool. So we definitely covered a lot today. Um, so if listeners had to take one thing away from this podcast, what should they take away? Definitely. So uh, UVC disinfection systems are some of the safest, uh, some of the most well-tested um, on the market. And they can be used in just about any type of application uh, to make a space safer. Um, we're honored to be part of a technology that uh, allows businesses to reopen uh, allow schools to reopen, um, keeping students safe, um, and we'll continue to innovate in the space uh, to make our products easier to use, uh, safer, and cover more applications. That is probably exactly a really good summary of the entire podcast. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you for uh, joining us today. And thank you to everyone who's taken the time out of your day to listen. Uh, so for more information on Puro, you can go and visit the Marketplace. Um, and you can also be on the lookout for our next episode. And remember that all of these podcasts are demand on demand. Thank you. <laughs>